and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information. Well, this video is all about keeping your E31 in the best condition possible, looking after the engine, looking after the leather, looking after the paintwork. I'll go through 10 things you can do to keep it looking as good as new and driving as good as new. And that's always the aim with these cars. But before we get started, I'd really like to thank all my viewers and subscribers for all the comments and everything. I've now reached the impossible height of having over a million views on my videos and over 10,000 subscribers. And I know it's a feeble amount compared to some of the big channels, but for a feeble little uh, channel like mine, it's absolutely amazing to me. Yeah. The videos are really just made for putting the how-to routines which are on MeetNet onto video and I never expected it quite that big. Thanks for the people who put the comments on. I'm so used to your names now. As soon as I see your comments come up, I think, ah, oh, there he is. <laughs> I wondered where he was. And yeah, thank you very much. It really does help the channel if you uh, subscribe and you comment and put a thumbs up on the video and watch the videos to the end and that makes it well more fun for me because I like getting more videos, uh, video views and so on. But anyway, thank you very much. Right, let's get on. Sounding good as always. Right, number one on our list is oil and filter changes. Yeah, you might have guessed because I'm always banging on about the fluids in these cars. Yep, every year or 10,000 miles, whichever comes the soonest. Now, you may have only done 500, 1,000 miles in a year and think, oh, it's, it's only done that. I'm not changing the oil. Well, you've got to. If you want the engine to last any length of time, it's imperative that you change the oil and filter every year. The reason for that is the engine oil isn't just a lubricant. It has lots of other properties, and one of the most important being a detergent. Yes, it cleans things. And it's very important to clean things because we have some very small oilways within the engine. And without the detergent, a varnish will build up and those small oilways will slowly block up. And one of those oilways goes to the timing ta chain tensioner. Um, as we've covered on this site a few times, the timing chain tensioner is imperative to saving the timing chain guides. Now, I've heard it said so many times that, oh, they just wear out with age. They don't. I mean, if you look after an engine and do its oil change, they'll last more or less forever. The reason that they fail is that they get flailed by the timing chain. And the reason that the timing chain flails around is because the timing chain tensioner has failed or has got blocked up. Um, it's just a cylinder and a piston, the same as anywhere else. And... If you don't change the oil, eventually these two parts get stuck together and then you end up with very little tension on the timing chain and that will allow it to flail around. Now, the other failure mode is that the oilways get really small. The pressure relief valve fails because it gets blocked up with varnish. And when you first start the car, there's no pressure on the timing chain at all. And in that situation, the timing chain just flails the guides to bits, and that's the end of that. There's other compounds in the oil that are just, an import, just as important, which disperse over time, and that's rubbicizers and plasticizers. Components to look after your rubber seal, so it will help stop leaks from the valve cover gaskets, the front and the rear main seals and stuff like that. So you've got to understand it's imperative that you change your oil and its filter every shit single year at the very longest. Otherwise, you're just going to end up in tears. One feature of the E31 that people quite often talk about is the ability for the windows to wind themselves up just before you reach 100 miles per hour. And some people actually have an attempt to see if it's absolutely true. Well, it is, but don't do it. And it isn't because of the wind noise or anything like that. It's because the headlining will completely disintegrate. It's a system where it's a hard backing with an orange foam on top to which is stuck the headlining material. It needs very little excuse to completely disintegrate. 
Yeah, if you poke it, for instance, it'll fall apart. Yeah, the orange foam just disintegrates after a period of time. And with a window open, that's enough turbulence to make it fall apart. But it usually start drooping at the back. Now mine's all stayed stuck up, fortunately. But that's because I'm used to the fact that, well, if you open the windows at any speed, it's going to fail. Don't forget the filter for the power steering and brake booster. Now on the early models, they had Pensin and, and these models, the later ones, all 840s, have CHF 11S. Um, and that's contained in a reservoir under the bonnet again. And it, as a general rule, you never need to refill it. And so the same fluid stays in there for more or less the lifetime of the car. But what people don't realise is there's also a filter in the reservoir. It's imperative that that filter is changed now and again, because eventually the power steering and the brake assist reduce to a point where it becomes dangerous. What people don't realise is the filter slowly gets blocked up. It's also important to replace either the pentin or the central hydraulic fluid every three, four, five years or so. And it's, as long as you replace a certain amount of it, you're fine. And when you change the uh, filter in the reservoir, it's much easier to syringe out all the fluid that's in it and while you replace the uh, filter. Now, why not replace all the, the fluid? Well, it's difficult to do so. And although it, it looks as though there's a drain on the power steering pump, don't try getting it off. I've seen so many failures of them trying to get that what looks like a drain off and it just snaps tools or you damage the drain plug and then you're in a much stickier situation than you were to start with. Much better just to pump the brake pedal a few times to fill the reservoir up with the engine not running, syringe out what you can, change the filter, replace that amount, which is probably only a pint or two, maybe even a, a litre at the most and that's enough to keep the system in good condition. But yet, yeah, replace your filter in the Pensin or CHF 11S reservoir about once every five years or so, otherwise it will block up. About 10 years ago, ZF, who are the manufacturers of the auto boxes in the E31, 32, 38 and 39, started maintaining gearboxes at their Belgium facility. Up to that point, they had said that the gearbox needed no servicing at all and it was filled for life. But they started this service where you could drive to their factory, they'd stick the car up on the lift, drop the pan, change the filter and the fluid, and at the same time, they would check the valve body and replace all the one way valves and also check there was no debris in there. And after they did the work, they went out for a test drive with the owner to make sure he was happy with the work. Now a friend of mine did this about 10 years ago, got to a set of traffic lights and it had just turned red so he stuck it into park and the engineer said no, no don't do that, keep it in drive and hold it on the brakes or put it in park and turn the engine off. And the reason for that was that in park with the engine running the clutches are still turning and where can occur in the gearbox. It's much better to hold it in park, uh, sorry, to hold it in drive, and then the only part of the gearbox which is turning is the torque converter. And that's quite happy just sitting there taking a bit of torque. And in that situation, no part of the gearbox is turning at all. And no wear occurs. So, if you're in a situation where you're going to be stopped for a while, either stick it in park and turn the engine off, or keep it in drive and just hold it on the brakes. That's much better for the gearbox. Look after your paintwork. Yep, the paintwork on these cars just ages with the car. And if you don't look after it, you'll start getting problems with a clear coat and stuff like that. So what I use is I use UV resistant polishes. You say no to every three months or so. Give the whole car a good polish. It's absolutely exhausting, but it's good for your fitness levels. Brings it up to real high gloss shine. UV resistant, so it's helping 
The paintwork is also as hard as nails. It really is tougher than the clear coat. It, it is really tough stuff. That looks after the finish of the car and probably about twice a week or something like that. I use Zeno 8 just to spray it on, wash it off, uh, wipe it off, brings back that real high gloss shine and keeps the UV resistant level up high. So even on an old car, you can keep the paintwork looking really good. So yeah, look after your paintwork. Battery. Yeah, BMWs really hate batteries with bad condition. And I'm not talking about voltage or charge, I'm talking about battery condition. And that is all down to charging it regularly. And it may be okay if you're using the car every day to go to work, that's fine, it'll stay in good condition. Use the car about once a week and slowly the condition of the battery will deteriorate. And it's intrinsic series resistance and its capacity will decrease. And when that happens, certain things don't work. And one of them being the gearbox. And then you start getting trans fail safe prog warnings on the mid and so on. So very important that battery is kept in good condition. If you're not using it much, put a battery conditioner on it and that look after your battery. And then your battery is going to last for a good 10 years. If you don't keep it in good, good condition, you're going to have problems and it's going to last just a couple of years. Always use the best fuel you can get. I always use Shell V-Power 99 octane and never anything else. I know it's got detergents in it, keep the fuel system clean, reduce any carbon build up in the cylinders, but more importantly than that, it gives you a lot more power. Yeah, the octane rating or AKI rating of petrol denotes its ability to resist knocking or pinging or pre-detonation. And you get pre-detonation at higher loads, higher compression ratios and higher temperatures. Now with the M70 and M30, the ignition timing had to be set quite conservatively um, to allow for fuels which might cause pinging. But with the introduction of knock sensors on the M60 engine, the timing could be tailored for the fuel that was being used. And of course the higher octane, higher AKI number, meant you could have higher compression, higher load at higher revs, and not get pre-ignition. So that's exactly what the DME, the engine computer does on the M60, introduced with DME 3.3. It will slowly advance the timing until it hears pre-detonation. It does that by four piezo sensors called knock sensors and they detect uh, combustion which is uncontrolled, which is what detonation is. Now with higher octane fuels and ones with a higher AKI, that advance, the timing can be advanced further and further and the more the timings advance, the more power can be realised from the engine. If your lever's in great condition and doesn't need the colouring or anything like that, as a general rule, it just gets ignored. And the problem with ignoring leather is that it does go brittle and it will crack and tear. So it's imperative that you keep it supple. And for that, I use Yellow Bee's beeswax, because all it's got in it is beeswax, canuba wax, and pharmaceutical grade mineral oil. It's such a simple task as well. All you need to do is have two cloths, one to put it on with, wait 10 minutes, and then wipe it off with the green one. Yeah, let's get on with it. Radiators, yep, yeah, keep your radiators clean. Um, there's good reason for it, and not only just from the front looking good, but between the radiators. On an 840, there's four radiators, all sort of sandwiched together. And what can happen to them is debris build up between the radiators. I only find, found out I had awful blockages on mine when I changed the condenser on it. And uh, yep, yeah, when I got the condenser out, there was more or less a mouse nest in there. I think there's a little dormouse nest in there. And that would have reduced the cooling efficiency of all four radiators. 
So we're not just looking after the coolant as seen on the gauge on the screen, but also the gearbox fluid temperature as well, oil temperature and the efficiency of the air conditioning. Without airflow through from the front of the car through the radiators, things don't work that well. The viscous couple fan won't lock in because it doesn't get enough air airflow to do it. Gearbox will overheat and so will the coolant. Coolant's not usually so much of a problem because when the car's moving through the air, you generally get enough air through the radiators to stop overheating. But things like the air conditioning, oil cooler, and the automatic transmission cooler, they need a bit more airflow. So look after your radiators. Coolant, make absolutely sure it's got BMW coolant in it, which is blue, and that it's changed every three years. That will help look after the hoses and the expansion tank. People are always going on about the expansion tank exploding, but it's nearly always due to the fact that I haven't used the right coolant. Now, BMW coolant's got a lot more than antifreeze in it. It's got lubricants in it, which looks after the water pump, and it's got plasticizers and rubbicizers, which look after the hoses and the expansion tank. Yep, every time I see a picture of a pair of heater valves that are all corroded, I think, oh, that's just plain water in there, or some rotten old antifreeze in there, which isn't BMW's. Now, I'm afraid using anything other than BMW's own brand coolant is a recipe for disaster, not only for the plastic and rubber parts, but the heater valve and the heater core and all sorts of things like that. You really don't want them filling up with rust. So use BMW's coolant. Seals, yeah, look after your seals, all the rubber seals on the car. Very important, you don't want damp getting into the car. We've covered why, because it's very expensive to repair any problems that are caused by damp. And you certainly don't want damp getting into the carpets and into the foam underneath, because then you need an industrial dehumidifier to dry the car back out again. Yep, the carpets don't dry on their own. If you've got moisture into them, into the foam, then it's going to take quite a job to get it back out again. So, yeah, look after the rubber seals around, windscreen, around the windscreen, around the doors, especially the, the very complicated ones around these doors, and especially where the two windows meet, the front and the rear windows meet. Keep those seals in great condition. It's easy. It'll take you an afternoon. Bit of gummy fledge. Go around all the rubber seals, and you'll thank me for it afterwards because the seals will last forever, and you don't get any moisture in the cabin. Very important on the 840 V8 is the timing chain tensioner. That's the device that keeps the timing chain snugly up against the timing chain guides. Of course, on the M60 engine, we've got an idler gear, but don't forget that the M60's got plastic timing chain guides as well. And it's important to stop the chain from rattling around in there. And the best way to do that, off we go. way to do that, replace the timing chain tensioner. Timing chain tensioner wears out. It's just like a, it, well, it is in fact a piston within a cylinder and it can wear out, it can wear out the piston itself and the cylinder and then you don't get the hydraulic pressure pushing the timing chain guide, a uh, timing chain tensioner against the guide and that will then allow the timing chain to rattle about and thrash the timing chain guides to death. So yeah, very important, change the temp tensioner. It's quite a simple job. It takes a sort of an afternoon at the very most, and that mainly just taking off bits of plastic to get to it. Changing the tensioner itself is pretty straightforward. Keep your wipers and washers working. Yep, yeah. a lot of these E31s don't ever see any rain. Mine does, because I drive it to work in all weathers. But on cars which don't see any rain, what eventually happens is the wipers just sort of seize up and the washer pumps just slowly fill up with water because they've never been used, and then they seize up as well. So you're caught in a quick shower while you're driving your car, the windscreen wipers go, 
<clears throat> about a quarter of an inch up and down and you're trying to use your windscreen washers and uh, yeah nothing much happens you get a little squirt onto the windscreen and that's that that's exactly what happened when I picked up my first E31 all those years ago I remember quite distinctly taking it out of London and then it started raining well it didn't rain much it just rained a bit so I've used the washers to put a feeble amount of washer fluid on the windscreen and the windscreen wiper sort of just smeared it a bit and then so it's too much effort just flopped back down again and didn't park yep and the whole reason for that is that the car was never in rain was kept garaged only went out on sunny days and that car had quite a low mileage this one's been out in all weathers 178,000 miles it's done and the windscreen wipers and washers all work perfectly um so yep use your wipers and washers check that they're working because you may need them in an emergency you need them to get through the MOT in the UK and if you don't use them they slowly seize up especially on cars with the headlight washing the high pressure headlight washing system now on those systems the main reservoir is actually in the boot or trunk and there's two reservoirs under the bonnet the same as it is in this model now in this model it's got a main wash tank you use your wipers and it'll squirt the windscreen through a pump on that tank you use the intensive wash it uses the pump on the intensive wash uh, tank and it'll squirt up onto the windscreen and so on and it'll keep on doing that until both of those are empty now if you've got high pressure headlight washers then those the intensive wash is the same as on this model the main wash tank has to be refilled by the reservoir in the boot or trunk and it hasn't actually got a filler cap on it's just got a small hole which is an air vent and not a filler and on those models what can happen is if the wipers and washers aren't used all that often especially not at night because of course the high pressure headlight washers only work when the headlamps are up then the washer pump in the boot or trunk just doesn't do anything it doesn't need to refill the tank at the front and it just sits there for years and years five years later it's seized up and you need to use your washers and the washer tank slowly uh, becomes empty and instead of refilling again as it should do general module commands the pump in the boot to refill the, the reservoir under the bonnet it doesn't because it hasn't been used for five years and it's seized up and I've seen so many cars with hard, bigger holes drilled in the reservoir under the bonnet to refill it because they don't realize the main reservoirs with underneath uh, the main of a spare wheel in the boot and it's filled up through a little hole on the trunk lid so yeah make sure you use your wipers and washers got high power headlight washers put the headlights on use them a few times and it keeps it all working and generally as long as you use them they keep working okay um i'll do a video on how to unseize wipers at some point probably do that video next um because the linkages all seize up if you don't use the wipers but you don't have to replace all the linkages it can be lubricated to get working again wipers and washers use them or lose them when the engine's cold just take it easy saves on the timing chain guides and all sorts of things pull away in second gear if you can and just waft along for a while that's what the old e31 should be like air conditioning on and just cool as a cucumber in fact the two miles it takes me to get to the highway i don't go above 1500 rpm and most of the time I'm just trundling along at about a thousand rpm yep just give it enough time so it warms up lets the engine oil circulate gets a bit of pressure in the timing chain tensioner yeah it'll thank you for it that's for sure so yeah just use the gears keep it below 1500 till the engine starts to pull out of the blue and you can just give it all the beans you like but when it's cold just take it easy it really isn't worth giving a lot of power to it 
because that really does sign the death knell for an engine when it's stone cold and you give it lots of revs it's not going to like you for that at all air conditioning make sure it's working and cooling down the cabin that may seem a trivial thing to say but it's very important especially in cars in moist environments like england is the air conditioning not only cools down the air that enters the car it also dehumidifies it now in england in winter time and you're trunching in and out of the car with wet shoes you end up with damp carpets the air conditioning will remove that damp from the carpets and from the rest of the cabin so it's imperative that the air conditioning system works because it dries out carpets and the foam underneath it and so on and without that the car's going to start getting a bit smelly and sort of musty and when you get in the car the sort of windscreens all sort of mist up and that's a good sign that the interior of the car is damp and you don't want damp in a car it's imperative that it's dry looks after all the leathers and so on so air conditioning keep it working drainage yeah make sure all your drainage channels are in good condition most important one being the sunroof now the sunroof has got a seal on it but it's only there to reduce wind noise it doesn't stop water getting past it instead it has a tray underneath the sunroof and any moisture that gets past the seal of the sunroof lands in the tray and the tray has four holes in it to four pipes two go down the front through the a pillars two go down the back through the c pillars and out underneath the car now if they block up instead of the water going down those channels it'll pop onto the headliner you know either go forwards and down the a pillars or go backwards and down the c pillars whichever way that it goes it's no fun at all because if it goes down the a pillars it will go down go into the electronics which are in the footwells and then soak into the carpet and the foam underneath and it's a devil's own job to get moisture out of a car so it's imperative that the sunroof channels are kept clear that can be done with uh, weed whacker or strimmer wire sort of nylon rope you can poke down and clean them up and it's best to check them now and again just to make sure they're all draining away and not all blocked up moisture is the killer of old cars it really is and on an e31 that has a cabin that you know looks so spectacular it's imperative that you keep the interior in good condition because i've seen so many of them for sale that's got mold starting to grow here and there and that's always due to either the sunroof drains being blocked up or the air conditioning system not working which would dehumidify the cabin for you so sunroof drains keep an eye on them make sure they're not blocked up and there we go then i think that was 14 or 15 rather than just 10 but even then i forgot about the gearbox fluid and filter and the brake fluid both of which need changing regularly and uh yeah so yeah, it seems a lot of work but i mean that's stretched out over in some cases 10 years and it's not too hard, not too arduous to look after these things. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Put a thumbs up if you like the video. And I'll see you next time.